everyone, and welcome back to AFL Unfiltered. <laughs> I'm your NRL? host, Andrew Mensel. Me. No, I'm sorry, Jaleesa and Paul, welcome, but I'm a convert. I've been watching make, Making Their Mark on Amazon Prime. Oh, this is not good. a sponsored post, but I'm an AFL fan now. I I'm, want to talk I'm, about the Swans' big win on the weekend over first the, of all, the Lions. You'll uh, say anything if someone will pay you. I'm not being paid for this post. I am I am indoctrinated into the AFL well, world. Welcome, Paul. How are you? Good. And, Jaleesa, I'd like to clarify that I will say anything if anyone will pay me. So <laughs> if anyone wants to pay me for anything, um, if you want me to be an AFL fan, I will. I too would like to clarify that. <laughs> How are you, Paul Jaleesa? Paul up for sale. Yes. <laughs> How are you? Uh, I'm really well. I'm really well. Yeah, no, I, I love the behind-the-scenes stuff from the AFL, and you could never get that in an NRL context, could Why? you? Why? Well, can you imagine the stuff they'd be filming? What do you All mean? the meatheads in the dressing room slamming each other and stuff. I think there's a whole world of NRL that you don't mm. actually know. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm an AFL convert, so in I this episode... I can't wait for 10 years' time when you're an NRL convert and mm. we can remind you of all this. <laughs> can you just quickly name the 18 clubs, Minus? Mm, okay. Um, I don't know. Big, big Swans fan, though. Big Swans fan. <laughs> <laughs> there, all right, there's a lot of birds, so you just have to remember a lot of birds. <laughs> um, magpies. Collingwood. Yeah, very good. Ah, yes, one out of Crows. The crow, Adelaide. <laughs> See, I'm doing well. The Cats, Geelong. Okay. <laughs> all right, we don't have to do all that. West Coast. <laughs> Eagles. Very good. Fremantle. Okay. Dockers. And, an and we've lost everyone. Okay. Hello, listeners. It's the Cricket Unfiltered podcast. No, we're not switching to a winter AFL podcast or an NRL podcast. We are going to wrap up all the cricket news. We've got lots of listener questions, and then we're going to bring it on home with our special guest, Shane Watson. But let's start off. We've got a couple of questions from our listeners. The first one was Martin Lawrence from Victoria, who surprisingly wants us to talk about New South Wales being bowled <laughs> out for 32 against Tasmania. And Jack Taylor said, can we get a mad menace? Well, I've got to say, I was ropeable when New South Wales were bowled out for 32 on the weekend against Tasmania. Very, very disappointing. Paul, you and I have seen a lot of New South Wales cricket in the last few years, but that is a... The lowest ever score, terrible. Yeah, and amazing how quick it was. And it's one of those ones where every ball just seemed to... Um, you know, there's one, there one OBW that I thought was a bit uh, curious. I thought that maybe um, Sanger was a little bit unlucky. I thought he got outside the line of off. But yeah, Jackson Bird, wonderful bowler. I feel a bit sorry for him because his last test match was that horrible wicket at the MCG uh, in 2017-18. He'd been in the squad, finally got in the match, and then it was that game that Alistair Cook got the double century on the flattest pitch of all time, and that's the last <laughs> test match that he's ever played. Uh, so really good bowler, so pleased for him. Uh, got his top score as well. Um, so what a, what a day for Jackson Bird. What about the records that fell, Paul? You love your stats. I mean, run us through a few. Well, I mean, where can you Give us start? some context for this disgraceful performance. Well, as you've correctly put here, it's... Um, the, their previous lowest Sheffield Shield score was 53. But they've broken a record that predates the Sheffield Shield. I mean, that's just started yesterday, 1892-93. <laughs> um, they have broken their lowest ever score, which they set in 1868-69. That predates the Sheffield Shield. It predates the SCG. The game was at the Domain. It predates WG Grace growing a beard. If you ever see really young photos of him, he was 20 then and he <laughs> had no beard. Very handsome man in his younger days. It was only New South Wales' 12th ever game. How can we do this? 32. And here's how the Sydney Morning Herald began their article back then. The intercolonial match for the season 1868-69 commenced yesterday in the domain under favourable under favorable circumstances. I include that quote because they mention it's the... the Intercolonial match for the season. New South Wales only played one game that season. Better than the season before where they played none. The crowd on the first day, 10,000. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Um, and the paper wasn't shocked because um, Victoria the, had batted first, only made 61. <laughs> New South Wales then got 30, 37. Victoria 149. And New South Wales finished with 95. So Victoria won by 78 runs. And um, one last thing. That could get reported uh, pretty much instantaneously down to Victoria because there was an overland telegraph, but it had only been in for 10 years. So 10 years before that, if the game had been on, the only way that Victorians would have found out the score was when the boat came back with the, with the newspapers from New South Wales. That's how far back into the past we are wow. delving. Bet this current team wishes that situation was <laughs> I think, current. Um, the, this um, game, though, it really shows... Well, 
I guess, New South Wales side of things, really shows um, how it's such a mental game sometimes because then when the wickets start falling and you just can't get into any sort of rhythm and mentally you've just already lost. Oh, they've got the collapsing thing happening this year, New South Wales. Bowled out for 64 against Tasmania before the Big Bash break. But, Jaleesa, you must admit, New South Wales got off very easy that it was the first weekend of the real footy last weekend because if if New South Wales had been bowled out for 32 and there wasn't AFL on... It would have been front page of the newspapers, leading off... No, New York Times would have led with it, mate. (laughs) Exactly. I don't know if it would have been front page of the newspapers, but I take your point. I think if there hadn't been NRL and AFL on, for sure it would have got a lot more of a run. So I'm sure they're happy to be slipping under Mm. the radar at this late uh, late stage. One little bonus is that... It's awful. Tasmania have made a lower score than that. Their lowest score is 18. And the lowest score... Ever in first class cricket in Australia is 15 from Victoria against the MCC in 1903-04. I mean, you've got the stats here, and all the scores are from last century or well, yeah, last a long, century long century time century. ago. Yeah, <laughs> and there's one score, 2004-05, South Australia bowled out for 29. So they're the only ones sort of who've currently done something as bad as New South Wales. But what I, what wounds me is that it's New South Wales. I mean, this should be not just like. The, the best cricket state in Australia. But, you know, it's one of the best in the world. And, okay, a couple of players are out. Smith, Warner, Enrique. There were Enrique. quite a few players out, yeah. But still, 32. I mean, that is – they sh- head should roll. They should get the guillotine and just take them off. Well, on that front, on to my favourite topic. Here we go, Ollie Davies. It's time for Ollie Davies, surely. Yeah. Oh, um, my Lord. Now, I know he played a poor shot um, the, other, the other day, although he batted really well in that game before he played that poor shot. But, I mean, you know – I, I, I'm in all in all seriousness, um, he averages 56.4 across the last two seasons in first grade for Manly. Had a strike rate of 99.93. Now, if it was 99.94, then that would be guaranteed. He'd have to get in there because it's Bradman's average. But a strike rate of 100, averaging 56, that's not a player who's um, just a slogger. That's a player who can play. And he's only 20. And uh, not to pick out, um, you know, I mean... Not Nick, to pick out, but I'm going no, to. Now, here, here are the players I'm going to pick out. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Nick Larkin, who I've heard him on podcast. I really like Nick Larkin. He sounds like a really nice guy, but he's about to turn 31. He averages 29.05 for New South Wales. I, I think that um, you'd have to say you're going to be better off with, with going for a younger player. Now, I know he's an opening batsman, um, and he's averaging 45.63 in grade in the last two years. I thought I should check those stats to make sure that I'm not that I am comparing apples with apples. Same thing with Jason Sanger. He's a young player, but in his 16 first-class games for New South Wales, he's only averaging 21.8. And then I felt obliged to check his first-grade um, stats in the last two years, and they completely ruined my argument. <laughs> he's averaging 80.1. <laughs> <in the last. laughs> so I, I read that out grudgingly, so maybe, maybe I'm completely wrong. <laughs> well, I think I can get behind Davies. I don't like your Nick life. Larkin is about to turn 31. I thought we weren't ageist here, Paul. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I'm, I'm saying that... Um, that shows he's had a, a decent sample size. It's not like he's okay. a... Yeah. Okay, know. right. I Because I... you're also about to turn 31, aren't you? No, I'm about to turn 27. Uh, okay. Wow. <laughs> Me that too. Weird. <laughs> I work like so that. So exciting, you're 27. <laughs> like... Uh, so, yeah, I bring in Ollie Davies. Actually, Adam Gilchrist was interviewed by Matty White today and he said he thinks one of the most exciting players in the country is Oliver Davies. I, I haven't got a feeling like this since I've watched Gilchrist. That when you watch him play, every ball is like, what's he going to do now? Um, you know, seeing him five sixes in a row did that. He hit six sixes in a row a few years ago in an underage comp. So, yeah, he's very exciting. Yeah, but very... I now live in the Manly area as well, so I'm kind of I've become parochial. <laughs> You're a local. Go yeah. see Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> well, that left the Sheffield Shield table. That, what are they an AFL club? <laughs> um, Sheffield Shield table, Queensland and New South They're Wales. They're about to be if they keep playing like they are. Mm, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> Queensland are up the top of the ladder. New South Wales second. So basically, New South Wales are leading the Marsh Cup table. They're second on the Shield. You could have a team bowled out for sixty-four and thirty-two, win both comps and the Big Bash, which would mean. They could win everything and still put in a performance like that. Next thing we'll have a team bowled out for 36, beating Australia in a test series here. That would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so that leaves Tasmania, WA and Victoria, with this, especially WA and Victoria, have very slim chances of making the Shield final. Now they'll need to win both their games and they'll need to hope New South Wales or Queensland don't add to their points tally. 
but yeah, Queensland, the favourites to host the final against a, a, a very inconsistent New South Wales. And, and good that Warner and Enriquez can take off the shield to rest up for their IPL club. I think that's nice that we're doing that for the IPL clubs now. It's very bitter of you, Menas. Very bitter. <laughs> I'm feeling bitter. Yeah, I mean, I think... Oh, I can see where you're coming from, but I can see where they're coming from as well, and I think it's just the way of the world. Yeah, it's a complicated season, but it, it does irk me. J- Jack wasn't wanted mad manners. Well, I'm mad. I can tell you, Jack, I'm mad. <laughs> and, and finally, the March Cup. As I said, New South Wales are on top. Queensland, Tasmania in second and third. WA just got a double bonus point as we came in here, so that will rocket them up the table, but... With just five games being played, New South Wales in pole position in the Marsh Cup. So they are doing well despite the 32. We're going to take our first break and then we'll be back with the cricket headlines.